Welcome to the Startup Sessions, the number one web show and podcast for trusting your gut, breaking the rules, and starting something meaningful. Featuring in-depth interviews with acclaimed creative entrepreneurs that have succeeded at building their own remarkable businesses. This week, my phenomenal guest is creative catalyst and heart-centered entrepreneur, Willow O'Brien. And today, we're going to be talking about a subject that is so important for creative entrepreneurs, and that's how to find success in business as a creative entrepreneur. And Willow truly embodies what it means to be heart-centered and focused on building a business. And what I really love about this discussion is Willow talks about how we can find that sweet spot where we're doing the meaningful work that we're called to do, and we're also wildly successful at the business aspect of what we do. And so many people are brilliant at their craft, that thing that they do, but they're not able to marry it with a solid business approach to succeed at a high level. And this is where Willow really specializes, and that's exactly what we're going to be talking about today. So settle in, get ready to expand, and hear an amazing discussion on episode 32 of The Startup Sessions. Welcome to episode 32, everyone. Today, I am delighted to have my special guest, Willow O'Brien, on the show. Willow is a creative catalyst and a heart-centered entrepreneur that I'm super excited to have today. Welcome, Willow. Thank you so much, Michael. So I was just telling Willow this before the show here. We were chatting for a few moments, and I saw Willow speak at the Pioneer Nation event that was held in Portland that really was geared towards creative entrepreneurs. And I was blown away by Willow's energy and her enthusiasm for what she does. And I wrote in my notebook, have Willow as a guest on the startup sessions. So here we are today, a few months later. (laughs) I'm excited for this moment. And I'm sincerely really excited to have you on the show. Um, We're going to focus on the art of succeeding as a creative entrepreneur. And that's kind of your sweet spot, right? It's like my favorite topic ever. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> how, to, how to do what you love and thrive while doing it. It's perfect. Great. Then you're a perfect fit for, for this audience as well. Um, but first, I want to give you a proper intro. Willow lives in San Francisco, California. And over the last decade, she's founded three creative businesses, co-founded two startups, produced a video series, and developed multiple programs empowering thousands of creative entrepreneurs. And I have looked at your website, and I'll have that in the show notes for this show at willowlovesyou.com. I love that. (laughs) And you've got some tremendous um, knowledge and insight and programs that I would encourage everyone to go check out. Um, Today, Willow, you're a writer, you advise startups, you coach creative small business owners, and it seems that you're speaking at a lot of events all around the country, correct? Yeah. Yes, I love, love speaking. And really, just the events, I mean, similar to Pioneer Nation and, and being yeah. there with you. It's the people that you connect with, all these brilliant minds and brilliant ideas. I love that. That's super exciting. So I love the, I'm a huge fan. And um, I encourage people to, to, if they've not heard of you, to definitely check you out. That's part of the purpose of this show is exposing people to my audience that, in my opinion, they need to know. And that can really be a help on the journey to doing what they're trying to do. So I have so many questions to ask you today and a limited time to do that. So let's just get started. Um, Since we're going to be talking about succeeding as a creative entrepreneur, let's start with you. Have you always been a creative biz builder? Yeah, for a long, long time. Even when I actually was thinking of this the other day because I've been um, staying at some friend's house and this one friend didn't have a desk in his house. Uh And I was like, gosh, I have never really not had space in my house for where I'm building my business or I'm really like focused on, um, you know, putting some work into the the projects that I'm passionate about. So even way back when I had my last like real job, full time job, which is, (laughs) Uh, way back in the early, probably like 2001, something like that. Okay. Um, uh, I basically, I, even at that point, was still doing projects on the side. I still always okay. had little like freelance projects I was messing around with. 
Okay, so this is part of your DNA. You, you're, yeah. you're, you're, you've been called to this work for, for a long, long time. Yeah, absolutely. And in fact, I'm even like thinking back further that um, I always even like published my own little newsletters. And then as soon as I was able to get a, a website, I was always doing that on the side. And, and that's actually really what got me my first job was having a website, like more in the direction that I wanted to go, um, doing more like design and work online and such was all because I just kind of on my own was fueling this passion by creating things and then had something to show for it. And that's what the employers and the people there were like, oh my gosh, that's incredible. But it's obviously evolved <laughs> way more since then even. <laughs> just a little. <laughs> yeah, just a little. <laughs> and you know, that's one of the things too. I'm glad you brought that up. That's one of the things that um, might be often overlooked for, for people, for creative entrepreneurs that are wondering, is it really right for me to, to like go pursue these things that I've been interested in. And gosh, if you've been interested in something, like it's something that you've always done, from my perspective, that's like the surest, one of the surest signs that yeah. that's something you're meant to do. That's Absolutely. part of who you are. So thanks that's for a, bringing that up. Yeah. And I, can I speak to that actually really quick? Because, sure. Yeah. Um, one thing that I find over and over again is that my clients will come to me and it's like they're looking for, you might, you may have even been in the audience when this happened, um, when I was on stage and that woman was kind of asking me that question and I said, are you asking for permission right now? Because here's your permission slip, like yes, <laughs> go do that. And I find so often that my clients come to me and they are just looking for permission, like is this okay, I, I want to do this thing. and. And, and I'm like, yeah. And the big thing that I say over and over again is that it's going to continue knocking on your door. It's going to continue coming back around if you don't listen to it. And, and then the one thing I say big time is that, guess what? It's not knocking on my door or her door or his door. It's knocking on your door. Like, this is your idea. It's coming through you. And that's where we need to cultivate that courage and that compassion for ourselves and this idea to really give it a safe place to come out into the world. Okay. I love that. That's so, so good. Um, and that might, gosh, probably lead into a, a question. I've got some questions here. That, that feeds perfectly into, you know, I guess one of, one of my questions is geared towards my audience because I get asked this question a lot. And so I wanted to ask you, you know, I've got a creative idea that I feel great about, um, but I'm working full time and I want to bring this idea out into the world and ideally make it a full time gig at some point. Yeah. What do you recommend as the most important steps for getting that idea off the ground? Uh, deceptively simple is just start to yeah. absolutely just really, I think that. Um, there's something to be said for, in fact, it's a beautiful quote um, about how action breeds confidence. Yeah. And it's so, so important that when we just start putting those wheels in motion and we start what I call getting in relationship with it. Yeah. So, so often we'll think like, oh, if I could just paint all the time or if I could just write all the time or, I mean, I feel like we even sit around fantasizing about exercise or doing yoga or things and it's like stop thinking about it and start doing it even in small small little ways by us yeah. getting back into relationship then it allows it to to start blossoming and growing i love that i love simple i'm a huge advocate of simple so i really resonate with that idea um all right let's back up a second too i was going to ask this earlier but what we were talking about really fed into that last question how would you define a creative entrepreneur? Because I think some people say, you know, I'm this or I'm that, or it gets confusing. How would, Willow, how would you define what a creative entrepreneur really is? Yeah, people ask me that all the time because I say that I work with creative entrepreneurs. They're like, what's the difference between a creative <laughs> entrepreneur and a regular entrepreneur? And, um, and the way that I describe it is it's really an entrepreneur that is doing what they love. They're, they're building a business based off of their passion or their craft. Okay. And so that means that um, they have so much heart in it. There's so much heart in it that often the, the byproduct of that, unfortunately, can be that they just get in their own way, right? Yeah. They're so emotionally tied to it and they love mm -hmm. it so much that yeah. it can be really kind of tangled. And furthermore, a lot of people even develop businesses that are based off of 
um, an experience that they've had in their life, sometimes not a happy experience. Mm -hmm. So it's even that much more tangled. You know, you've got um, some people that are going out there and helping other divorced women, or you've got people that are going out there wanting to create major change in homelessness. And, you know, all the little tendrils that feed back to that led them to that moment of wanting to be that. I mean, in fact, a great example for my own work is that I do a lot of work really kind of geared towards the workaholics, the people that are so addicted to, you know, kicking butt and going out there and like, you know, making things awesome, which is great, but the, the side effect of that is often getting spread way too thin or overwhelmed or trying to do it all yourself. And so as I do my work and continue to walk my own talk, I'm able to then lend that to the people out there. So it's taken a long time for me, but I see that time and time again that people will trip themselves up because they're just so heart-centered to it, which is a completely positive thing. That's the first thing I say right off the bat is like, this is a good thing, that you love this so much that it's, it's so close to your heart. Um, and it's also a, another great reason to bring in other people in your business, whether it be an assistant or some other teammate so that you can see the forest from the trees and get things done faster because they're not as emotionally tied to it. Mm, that's, a, that's a great point, Willow. Um, I th there's so much, you're right. I mean, I care about what I do and a lot of my clients do. And it is so easy to get wrapped up deeper in a, in a lot of the drama around what I'm doing because I care right. so much. When I was doing my corporate job, it was easy. I showed up and I did what people told me and I got my job done and then I came home. <laughs> yeah. It's but the thing is, it's you're so right. It's so much more powerful. And when that energy's harnessed, it can be incredibly impactful in yep. the the audience that you're serving. And I think you're a great example of that um, from my experience seeing your website, seeing you speak at Pioneer Nation. So you're a great uh, leading example of what that looks like to harness what that means to be a heart-centered person and entrepreneur and bring that out into the world. Yeah, there's no other, um, there's no other path really like this journey, right? will teach you more about yourself. <laughs> It'll teach you, <laughs> you know, more about like the, you know, all the weaknesses and the strengths that you have. And I mean, it really is kind of one of the most incredible spiritual journeys you can be on is be an yeah. entrepreneur and be following your heart because we're constantly having to, to hone and to listen and to really um, curate this experience and cultivate what we're, what we're really trying to say, what we're really trying to say. So there's a lot of deep soul searching. And I mean, it can be really intense and overwhelming. And it's also like the most glorious thing ever because you come out the other yeah. side knowing yourself so well, knowing what you stand for, knowing what you won't put up with. It's, it's pretty incredible. It's like a boot camp for, for your soul. I love it. <laughs> That's great. A boot camp for your soul. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. So one of the things that um, I run into, like I run into this with myself a lot, and also a lot of the, the clients that I have and the audience that I have um, that are creative entrepreneurs, they focus on doing their creative, their creative thing, whatever that is. And there seems to be a struggle between doing that thing and then effectively uh, marketing or selling that thing. And mm -hmm. there seems to be a lot of friction there for people. Yeah. Do, you have any, do you have any wisdom or, or things that you tell clients around that subject? Because that just seems to be a, that's, that's a sticky one for a lot of creative on, entrepreneurs. Yeah. And would you say in particular that, that it's really the, the asking for the money or putting a number on on that? What would you say is the biggest I, challenge there? Oh, boy. I would say it's almost, I'm thinking of one person as, a, as an example that makes incredible, like he's an artist. He makes, mm -hmm. he makes these amazing uh, belt buckles and things of that nature out of metal and and they're amazing and he does that that's like what he does yeah. and he's an artist in the workshop but when it comes to actually um marketing that like spreading right. the idea yeah. um and i don't know if it's necessarily about the money because he puts a number on it and people buy it but it's just like that whole process of like i guess finding connecting people with what it is that you do and you care about yeah. Yeah. So what comes to mind there is, 
I, because I'm with you, I, this is what I do, right? I, I work with so many incredibly talented creatives. I actually, um, it's funny because while I, I'm a coach, I sometimes yeah. feel like I'm a business therapist. I actually <laughs> often feel like I'm an agent. Like I'm the one that's like coming in and I'm like, I see all your brilliance and all that you're capable of and I'm going to go out there and like help the world know about you. Because yeah. I just see this, that what's so, and like you stay here and do what you are best at and what you are so brilliant at. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to help do these steps that are, just aren't in your wheelhouse. But that okay. my, one of my, that's like how I got into marketing is I sort of reverse engineered the fact that when I get really excited about something, I can't help but shout it from the rooftops. And apparently yeah. that's called marketing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So it's really I, I so I so know this thing where you see people and it can be really frustrating to be like, oh my gosh, the whole world needs to know about you. And yeah. quite frankly, I really think that the one again back to simplicity, but it's genuinely um, and it you can make it as complicated as you want, but the bottom line is it's all about investing in yourself. And so if that means that you're, and, and it's also really recognizing your strengths and owning your weaknesses. So if you're like, this is my craft, this is what I'm so good at, this is what I'm the best at, own it, awesome. Yeah. You're not so good at marketing, own it, fine. Yeah. And yeah. go out there and invest in yourself and in your business. Find a coach or a marketing person or an assistant or somebody that that is their natural thing, that they, they can't help but shout things from the rooftops and really invest in it. Like if it's a business and you knew that you could invest X amount of dollars in it that would actually, you know, double your business and then all of a sudden give you more money to then invest in it again, it's like this is business. And and if you want to continue doing what you love and the best part about all that is you just get to stay focused doing what you love. You could yeah. be in there doing your craft. It's and you've got teamwork. I mean, for me, I just think you don't for anyone that I talk to, any of my clients, it's like we don't want to do this alone, you know, and while you can work in solitary, I think it's really awesome to be able to have people that are in it with us, able to give us that guidance and feedback. Yeah, um, yeah it's pretty powerful having people on your team. And the sooner you, you know that and get that, the sooner you can grow. That's great. I mean, I, I've been hesitant on that for my own business for a long time, what feels like a long time. And I'm just now getting to that point where I'm figuring out, okay, what, what do I really love to do? What am I good at? What can I give to someone else so I can spend more time doing yeah. the things that I feel that I'm brilliant at. Yeah. So good. So good. I love that. I love the way you break things down simple and like easy to understand and, and really practical for people. Yeah. Thank you. Um, okay. That's, that's really good stuff. I, th and that's, you know, honestly, that's like something that I, a lot of the clients that I've worked with and, and, and creative entrepreneurs, um, it's hard to let go of, like pieces of your business because you see it all as like one big like piece of your art, right? Yeah. So being able to recognize like the pieces that you're so good at and letting go and hiring people where that's like, that's their art, that's their genius, yeah. that's their expertise to come in and help you with marketing or bookkeeping or whatever. Mm -hmm. So good. And there's so many lessons within that too then, you know, about how you're communicating with someone else and teamwork and collaboration and all those relationships. Like there, there's no mistakes in any of that and all that we learn. I've been yeah. through many, many partnerships and done many collaborations, some successful, some where we decided we needed to go separate ways. But there's so many rich lessons in all of that. Yeah. Um, another thing I want to speak to just on the same topic, which is that I think often... You know, so as we're growing our businesses, right, and they're kind of, it's like we grow and then we get to a certain level and then we grow and we get to a certain level yeah. and we're having to make these decisions, these decisions all the time that, you know, especially when you're just on your own, they can mm -hmm. get a little bit overwhelming, which is why it's helpful to have, you know, a coach or a, a, a great network of people that are on your same side, Pioneer Nation, all these great conferences that you can go to where you can meet like minds so that when you have something you're up against, you can have that relief a little bit, not having to make every single decision on your own. Um, but something I feel is a, a little bit of an illusion is that as we make these decisions, that they're somehow like the end all be all, mm -hmm. or that, or that this is going to be the the last one, or it's going to be forever, or something like that. And something that I've learned over all my years is that that this never changes. This this looking at how my business is now and what's working for me and what's not. It is constantly evolving. 
I mean, constantly. So even just recently, my business like exploded. It's like quadrupled or whatever the five one is. It's like it seriously is just really, really blown up, which is so awesome. And um, yeah. So as I've done that, I've like hired teams and hired an assistant, and then you know you realize maybe this assistant isn't good for this, but then this team is really good for that, or maybe actually this team isn't good for this, and now I need to go find someone else. And and so it's like this constant. I've been calling it almost like I've been like this stabilizing, like I'm on a surfboard and I'm just kind of like trying to like stay you know upright. Yeah. And but the one thing that's so fascinating to me is that like here I could have got to this level and been like, yes, I'm like, you know, I'm totally making my my goals of all my monthly income. I'm actually knocking them all out of the water. This is awesome. Life is great, blah, blah, blah. But it's like it doesn't work that way because even now that I'm in it, I realize that there's a few uh, a few clients maybe that I set up in a certain way that just really aren't serving me. That as I have now a very, very full schedule, I'm like, um, you know, this work over here, I don't really actually want to do anymore. And I'm the one who chose to take that on. I'm the one who said I was going to do that. So how can I renegotiate that? So I really genuinely feel like as entrepreneurs, the more we can strengthen our muscle of decision making, the more we can strengthen our muscle of negotiating, listening and negotiating with ourselves even, right? Yeah. And then just reset expectations. You know, you can totally say like, you know what, I realized I said I was going to do this and this is actually not fitting into what my business looks like right now. And so either, you know, there's tons of options, right? It's not black or white. You can um, hire someone. So that was the, one of the biggest things that I did is that I had looped myself into a lot of projects with my clients and I called up my teams and I said, I really need to have you guys do the project management on this. Are you okay to do that? And if not, I'll go hire a project manager because I realized I was a you know, essentially a stopgap in my own company. Um, so I was like, and then it was easy. I just introduced my clients to them. You know, I want to make sure that they have the best uh, care possible. So I was like, you know, so-and-so meet so-and-so. They are awesome. They're on my team and they're amazing. They're going to make sure your project goes super smooth. So it was like, it's a win-win for everyone because if I'm instead trying to live under this illusion that I've got it, and, and but I'm not happy with it and people aren't getting taken care of or projects are getting delayed, that's not going to be good for anyone. So yeah. resetting expectations and consistently uh, negotiating and strengthening that decision-making muscle, it's not the end-all, be-all, black and white. You can always change it back, but mm -hmm. the more you're able to like kind of, it's that honing the tuning fork that I call it. It's like this, yeah. this sweet spot. It's yeah. important. Yeah, you're so right. That's I've found that that is always evolving, always mm -hmm. day yeah. to day in some cases, and that's part of the beauty I think of being a creative entrepreneur is you you get to navigate that and kind of make that an art in and of itself as well. Like how how you create your business around whatever it is that you love to do. Yeah, absolutely. And that's when, when you finally get into it um, enough, it's that whole principle of working on your business and not in your business. Mm, yeah. And that's something that I've really found that I, I almost get addicted to where I'm like, I just want to set up like, and that's actually really what I do for so many of my clients, right? It's like, you've got this whole business that you want to run. How are you going to set up the systems in terms of making sure that it's really all your systems are working for you? So that yeah. you're not running around with a, you know, like a chicken with her head cut off trying to like yeah. figure everything out or keep everything in your head. But instead, all these systems can be working for you so that you can be efficient. You've got the space to, to step back and take a look at how are things going? Where do things need to get shifted around? Where could I use some support? Great. And my personal experience is that that needs to come way sooner than probably most of us think that it does. Totally. Because <laughs> things get busy really fast. You know, mm -hmm. once your business gets rolling, there's just so many hats to wear. And the sooner that you can start implementing some of those things, the quick, and I'm saying that because that's happening for me, like right now, like I'm just starting to realize, oh, my days are like full over and over and over and I don't have time to do some of these things. So I've, I've got to implement these systems. Um, you actually, I, I took away from Pioneer Nation, I forget what it was called, Willow, but it was, you had this like, this great resource that showed a lot of the tools that you mm -hmm. recommend using. And I actually took some of that and put it into practice. It was fantastic. Awesome, do you great. do you still have that that the the link up? Yeah. 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 We should just give them that link. Totally. I can, um, I can put that in the show notes. Um, okay, good. 
we can we yeah. can you can even send it to me afterwards and I can just make sure it's in the show notes for episode it's, 32. <clears throat> yeah, it's um willowlovesyou.com slash pioneers. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. Perfect. So for everybody listening and viewing, just go get that resource. It's really, really yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it's yeah. um I'm super geeky about systems and yeah. um it, there's so many out there, but I think it's about like finding the best ones and then what are they all for and how do they work together and you know, yeah. I think it takes some time, but like genuinely this, like with some of my clients, while some of it's very, you know, heart centered and we're just talking about the process and there's some coaching that's very much like that. And then there's yeah. other times where we actually dig in and I'm like, I'm going to sit down in Evernote with you and we're going to like really work this out so that, yeah. because otherwise sometimes, you know, we won't do it on our own. It helps to really have someone there like holding our hand and walking us through it because technology can be daunting for some yeah. I mean, I, I came from a technology background and I still, like, I, I th start to think about and sort through the systems to put in place on, like, which ones should I choose? Yeah. <laughs> and if that, I mean, that is the beauty of a coach that kind of specializes in that, someone like yourself. Yeah. Y yeah. You've kind of sifted through those things and know what works because I get overwhelmed just, first of all, it's overwhelmed thinking about all these things and how do I do them? And then it's overwhelmed <laughs> trying to think about which tools do I use and do I have to learn them? And, you know, kind of goes on. So, Coaching is huge for, for, for any business builder. I recommend mm -hmm. it. All right. Uh, let's see. Where do we want to go next? How about this? Uh, this really sticks with me, Willow. And this kind of comes back to some of the simple advice. Like simple, but people don't always do it or even realize how important it is. One of the things that I loved about your Pioneer Nation presentation was when you said your number one job is to keep yourself as happy and healthy as possible. And I'm a huge advocate of this. And, yeah. But I still don't always do, the, do, a, do a great job at it. What are the top three things that creative entrepreneurs and new business builders can do to keep themselves happy and healthy? Hmm. I think it's very individual. This comes back to, you know, what, do, what does happiness mean to you? Um, mm -hmm. What does health mean to you? Um, for me, one of the programs that I developed, the first one that I did out of the gates after I last uh, left my last startup, was built a program with my friend Mady, who's an incredible painter. Um, we did this um, whole online e-course called Reconnect, okay. and it was all about you know getting unstuck and finding your magic. So, how yeah. can you stay connected to your inspiration, your self-care? Um, your health, your space, and we really walked through this whole program. So within that, we did have uh, an incredible yoga instructor, Marianne Elliott, who does this beautiful 30 days of yoga. <clears throat> Excuse me. So she contributed to us. We have um, our writing teacher, Lori Wagner, who does, we do this incredible wild writing program with her that's like so cathartic. Um, so the principles within that, I would say, are I feel that we are happiest in life when, when we're clear on what we want. I feel like if we're lost at sea and we're kind of feeling like we don't know where we're going, uh, that that's where we actually get, we feel really disconnected. But when we're on purpose and we know we're, we're moving towards where we want to go, that's when I feel we're most lit up in our lives, you know, we're most engaged. And that's another thing, I, I spoke actually right before Pioneer Nation, I spoke at Microsoft. And it was all about embodied leadership. And really, that means just like showing up and walking your talk. And when we're doing that, <clears throat> we're able to really stay in alignment with, with who we are. So when we're, when we're out of integrity or we're not really paying attention to what we really want, it can be easy to kind of like drift and feel dis disconnected and disengaged and kind of go down that, that spiral of, of feeling really disconnected to the whole world. So my question is really, what makes you feel most connected? What makes you feel most alive? And making sure that you're doing that. And sometimes that is as simple as creating space in your life. That is the one thing. As I get busier and busier, it's not about time. For me, it's that I, I genuinely feel like I bend space and time. I want to feel expansive in my days. I don't want to feel rushed and like I have this like, 
burden of expectation. Like, why would I, I would, I'll go get a job if I want to feel that way, you know? Yeah. <laughs> this yeah. is about feeling like I have the freedom to, and sometimes I'll, I'll hear, you know, kind of like that whip cracker inner critic in my mind going, well, shouldn't you be like doing something right now? <laughs> and it's like, this is actually the way I've designed my life and I love it. So yeah. it's constantly connecting with what makes you feel connected, what makes you feel alive and, and then making sure that you're, you're doing that for yourself. If you are feeling unhappy or disconnected, start searching for what makes you happy and connected. Again, beautiful and simple, but not always easy. Can be easy. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's where, you know, asking for support. I mean, yeah. so we get so stuck in our own little bubbles sometimes. I mean, even me, I actually was just thinking that. Like, I have these, I always have, this is, kind of right in that alignment, right? It's like being really, really clear on what, what you want. It's one yeah. of the first things I do with all my clients is like, let's talk about what you want. And then that's even a process, right? Like yeah. giving them, you know, several permission slips to say, no, nope, dream bigger. Let's go bigger. Let's think about what this really could look like. And and then there's all these even like hidden and buried ones, you know, about like maybe the the, the family that they want to create someday and the children and the house they want to have that like they're so mired in right here that they have forgotten that they have these like larger goals. Um, so getting really, really clear. So like I was just saying that even me right now, I have these really clear four goals. But when you're an entrepreneur, there's not a lot of accountability unless you're working with some kind of a, a coach or you have some awesome like friend or mastermind group that you're working with. It can be easy to be like, okay, great. I've got those goals, but nobody's like, Willow, where's that draft, you know? So, <laughs> yeah. and so, yeah, it's like the more you can build in accountability, be really clear on your goals and then build in some kind of an accountability so that you have some mile markers. Yeah. Mm, that's great. Such good, so many good tips from you. Thank <laughs> you. I love this. I'm glad it's helpful. Yeah. Hey, I'm curious about one of the statements that you made just a few minutes ago. You talked about your business recently expanding and mm -hmm. going through this 5x phase mm -hmm. what would you what would you is there anything you can pinpoint to like how that growth happened was it any one thing or was a was it a culmination of many things coming together um how would you answer that i i get that question a lot as well um <laughs> So one thing I do feel is that it was a little bit of a rolling the snowball, uh, okay. which is you know a term where you're just kind of essentially like going and going and growing. Um, yeah. This incarnation, this specific incarnation of my business um, is about, well, now it's a little bit more than a year and a half old, but I've been, you know, it's like this incarnation, right? Because I was like, you know, on my own and doing web design and graphic design and illustration and then I started product line and then I hopped out of that and did a startup and then I hopped out and did a video series and consulting and then I hopped in and served as co-founder of another startup and then hopped out and that's when I launched Reconnect shortly after launched uh, Feel Alive started really diving into my heart-centered body-centered coaching work and consulting work and you know I so that's like my my best explanation is that it, honestly it was me walking my talk, me doing what yeah. I love so much through yeah. and through and and also really providing value where I possibly could. So after um, Yes and Yes, Yes last summer, which had taken up so much time and energy, um, I, ha I found myself having some space in the fall. And I was like, I, I love coaching and consulting creative entrepreneurs. I've got all this time. How can I, I just want to serve. I just want to serve and contribute and connect. That's what I love. And so I immediately put together, I mean, honestly, it was not strategic. It was out of my own, like, you know, wanting to connect with creative entrepreneurs, wanting to be of service because that's what lights me up. Talk about, you know, being healthy and happy. It's like, if I think about what I like, it's like I love working with people. I love being able to like serve and teach and support. So I put together uh, two things. I put together the Activators community coaching call. It mm -hmm. was just like, hey, every other week, why don't we hop on the phone? All the little questions that I get in the emails or all the little posts that I get that are just like, hey, can I pick your brain or whatever? It's like, bring them to the call. And then it's not just me. You've got all these other incredible entrepreneurs that are in the same place. They, I always all be like, here's what I think, but what, what does everyone else think? And then they'd give feedback as well. Um, and then here locally, I put together these feeding founders dinners 
where all the founders and people that were like working their butt offs, okay. butt offs in, in their own startups or their own companies um, and, you know, either just didn't take the time to really like feed themselves well. Um, so it was kind of all about like, let's feed your belly and your mind yeah. and pulling together and it was like a potluck. So, you know, here if you, they have like nothing in their fridge because they're putting all in their business. It was <laughs> awesome because I was like, you know, here it's like this smorgasbord of food and deliciousness. So there's no shortage and it just yeah. felt so abundant. And um, in those, I'll just share if anyone, you know, feel free to steal this idea and do it in your own town because it's just yeah. phenomenal. Um, but I actually kept a little bit of a structure for each of them in that, you know, we would mingle and, and have um, drinks and stuff. And while everyone is kind of pulling together their food, whatever they brought. And then as we sat down to eat, I posed one question that everyone would go around and answer. And it just helped bring together the whole group around a cohesive theme. It helped everyone yeah. really get to know each other deeper. And some phenomenal ripple effects have come out of those feeding founder dinners. Wow. So. What a great idea. I love that. I, I mean, that's you're a true connector, I can tell. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and what a great yeah. way to leverage that, you know? Just yeah. like really doing. It's, such, it's so good to talk to you and hear about like how you've brought the things that you love and, and created amazing, you know, just events and products from those. I love mm -hmm. that. Yeah, thanks. So good. All right, Willow, we're winding down the time. Okay. It's gone by fast as I knew it would. I'd love to end by going through our lightning round of questions and picking yeah. your brain on some of your favorite resources. So you ready? Right. Yep. Okay. What's the most influential book to you? Well, not a, not a business book per se, but one yeah. that I just feel is so deep and beautiful within its wisdom is Start Where You Are by Pima okay. Chodron. Okay. And Great. It's, it's like that is a message that I consistently share and, and even, you know, think back to all the time is that it's all about just like starting right here, not getting mired in the stuff of the past or where you think you should be by now, but just... Start where you are, right here, right now. Yeah, I love that. That goes perfectly with the first answer you gave to the question about just starting, starting yeah. where you are. Yeah. Right. All right. Best conference or industry event and why? So uh, I have to nominate my own. I, think, <laughs> I love it. For me, it really it's been phenomenal to to see um, so unexpected. But we, me and four of my girlfriends, put together a conference called Yes and Yes Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so Y X Y Y, and largely, most definitely was inspired by all the conferences that we go to all the time. You know, South by Southwest and XOXO, um, which could easily be in this list. Um, but the reason yeah. why, I, of course, you know have to even say this one is outside of the fact that we created it is that genuinely it's 400 of us and we we take over the ace hotel in palm springs and so it's basically like unorganized um just free moving so all of the contributors it's like very very contributor fed and so there's it's not even really unconference style because it's really not about a conference there's there are some talks, but they're like poolside, literally like you're sitting in the pool and the person's like on the edge doing a talk or people would kind of, kind of contribute their own things. Um, but it, it just was such an incredible, our whole idea was like what would happen if we put together all these, these hundreds of people, these thinkers, artists, creatives, geek, technologists, designers in one place and just let them be together for the weekend. Yeah, And the ripple effect that's come out of it, I mean, it's very similar from what you and I have seen from Pioneer Nation. Yeah. Awesome. You know, you get together yeah. these like minds and it's magic happens. Um, so we are now uh, up upon the second one this year in July again. And so our second yes and yes, yes. And yeah, it's it's been incredible just to see the the network and the ripple effect. I mean, it just goes to show that you know, bringing people together is really, really powerful. Yeah. Is that invitation only or is that something that someone can, um, so, anyone can some, go to? Somewhat. We, we really opened it up a lot more this year, um, yeah. but it usually sells out in about 24, 48 hours. So a lot okay. of people don't even hear about it because yeah. 
it's um, it's been such a fixed size and it sells out so fast. So it's not yeah. like we're marketing it. It's usually one of those things that people are hearing on the right when it's happening or after the Got fact. It. Like, hey, wait a second. Um, so. So yeah, but we did open it up, and there's actually, if you go to the website, there is, um, I'm pretty sure, a waiting list there that you okay. can get on, and then you'll be notified of next year. Okay, great. Yeah. And actually, what's fun is some of the people, so I've gone to WDS over and over again, and unfortunately yeah. this year it's on the same weekend as WDS, oh. um, <laughs> whereas last year I went to like WDS one weekend, and then yes and yes, yes the next. <laughs> um, but um, what's neat is that some of the people that I've met at WDS are actually going to come and join us at Yes and Yes, Yes this year, oh, which that's is great. really exciting. Yeah, just, I mean, because it's like, if you've been to WDS and now it's getting so big, and I mean, I absolutely love, love, love those events, but it's mm -hmm. it's a whole different experience, like, yeah. you know, pool, being in the pool, in the sunshine, with a cocktail in your hand all day. <laughs> 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 really, like, you know, there's not a lot of structure. You don't have to be like, yeah. oh, here's where I need to be at 2.30. You know, it's like, it's really beautiful for people like us that are so intensely, you yeah. know, scheduling our lives every single hour. Yeah. It sounds fantastic. I love that. Yeah, I would love for you to come. <laughs> All right. I'm going to WDS to this year, but oh, maybe good. next year. <laughs> right on, right on. All right. Thank you. I, I just, that, that's such a, it's cool to, to uh, you know, not many people talk about their own events because they don't have them, I don't think. So it's great to hear the story behind that too. So yeah. thank you for sharing that. Yeah, thanks. All right. Most effective strategy for growing your business. Focus. Focus. Favorite business tool or resource? I have to say Evernote. I'm okay. just so in love with Evernote. Okay. And this one I love because I'm a big, I love adventure. I love bringing it into my life and my business. So I always love asking people, like, what's, what's the favorite recent adventure that you've had in your life or your business or what's your favorite hobby or any combination of those things okay uh the one that springs to mind is that last year i had the opportunity of going to oslo norway okay. uh, for a conference and the entire experience of being in Norway and 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 we just got absolutely treated like queens when we were there, just completely taken care of all of our food and, and it's so beautiful there and just being able to meet entrepreneurs that are there. I'm really a huge fan of connecting with entrepreneurs from all over the world and actually I'm about to embark on a very big adventure with that in mind. And um, so, so yeah, I, I think that Oslo was like just such a cool experience. I highly, highly recommend going to Norway. It's gorgeous. Wow. All right. That's, that's a place I'll have to add to the list. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to the long list, I'm the sure. The long list. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Great. Willow, um, I want quickly before we sign off, I want to find out, find out what's next for you. Um, what project are you most excited about that's coming up that our listeners and viewers should know about? Awesome. So for the last year, all of the work that I've done and truly like what I call my heart song is my new program called Harvest and Thrive. Okay. And every single thing that I, that I do with my clients and everything, it's like amazing how it just all harkens back to this work. And Harvest and Thrive is really about consciously creating your bounty. So recognizing that you're never starting over, that every single... Thing that you've done thus far in your life, it all ties in. There's a thread that ties through that. So whether it be all your community that you have, all the strengths that you've built, and all the skills that you've mastered through all of your different things that you've done, it's recognizing that you can now leverage that right here and right now and build something, really consciously create it. So I go through everything from this clarifying your vision work that, that we do. Oh my gosh, something just... <laughs> the loud noise in my ear. Um, uh, I go through the consciously creation, consciously creating. Um, sorry, I go through the clarifying your vision process, mm 
and really getting clear on what you want, what you want to create. And with many idea people, it's having to then focus on which one you want to choose to yeah. actually put some good energy into that one thing to allow it yeah. to grow. Um, and then creating structure and focus, which is a lot of these systems that we talk about, all this awesome um, opportunity for really creating some efficient systems and and focus even if that just means that you're in relationship with your calendar and your time mm -hmm. that's a really really big first step yeah. uh, and then thriving financially which really speaks to all the things you were talking about right like how do we charge I, I, do, I would do a lot of work with entrepreneurs around you know what's their what's their financial models but then so much of that I have to say comes down to knowing what you need being able to speak up for your needs being able to set boundaries and being able to appropriately set expectations with yourself and other people. And that's where we talk about like the okay. reset expectations as well. Okay. Um, there's only three modules that I've had up, but this is a, a long-winded way of saying that I've actually taken that down now. If, if they go to, if you go to harvestandthrive.com, um, you'll be forwarded to the page on my site. It's also on my site under my courses. Um, but essentially, I put together three modules, but there's actually seven total. And so the exciting next thing that's on my horizon is that I'm actually doing a whole interview series and in summit, speaking to other people who are thriving while doing what they love. And then I'm also writing a book. And so an initial, there's going to be like an initial wave um, that comes out about that. Okay. And um, yeah, so I'm, I'm super excited. Between that and my current clients and my coaching and consulting and my speaking and this big adventure that I have coming up. <laughs> I love it, Willow. You're on fire. You're in fuego right now. I love yeah. it. So many exciting things happening in your business and your life. So yes. thank you very much for taking the, the time and attention and energy to speak with me today here on the Startup Sessions. This has been great. And yes, I know the listeners and viewers pleasure. are just going to are just going to love this. So, oh, good. Um, yeah, with that, I'm going to post all of these resources on the show notes for episode 32 uh, on the startup sessions. So be sure to go and check out Willow's website, blog, all of your incredible uh, like coaching modules and, and, and products that you've created. There's so much there. So I really encourage people to go see the show notes and check those resources out. Great. Thank you so much for having me, Michael. And anyone, yes. if you want to reach out and say hi, I absolutely love meeting new friends, hearing what you guys are working on and what you're up to. So please know I'm always here as a resource. Great. All right. Thanks so much, Willow. Appreciate yeah, having thank you. you. All right. We'll see everyone on next week's episode of the Startup Sessions. Take care. Bye-bye. Hey, if you enjoyed this interview, be sure to go to thestartupsessions.com and sign up to have the latest interviews delivered to your inbox weekly. All of these interviews are also offered on video at thestartupsessions.com or get the audio version via the Startup Sessions podcast. Just hop on over to iTunes and subscribe to the podcast there. Thank you so much for listening and watching. I know that your time is valuable, so I do my very best to provide the most inspirational and actionable content for creating a meaningful business. I'll see you on the next episode of the Startup Sessions. Hey.